Welcome everyone. Welcome to the 2022 February astrology uh, report. And this is where I'm giving commentary uh, where, you know, we tie in news events, current events with what's going on in the astrology for this month of February. And I got to say, happy birthday to my fellow Aquarians. Yes, I'm an Aquarian, three Aquarius placements in my natal chart. So very Aquarius here. We're all Team Aquarius here. And I am going to be talking a little bit about this Aquarian energy uh, as we get into this uh, because I think, you know, Aquarius is a very misunderstood sign and I could definitely speak to that. So, uh, by the way, if you are an Aquarian, make sure you are uh, hitting that subscribe button and activated the bell for notifications so we can stay in contact. I love my Aquarians, right? Yes, I'm partial. By the way, this bracelet was given to me uh, by an Aquarian viewer. So love y'all, Aquarius. Um, but regardless of whatever sign you are, I'm going to say we're going to get into an overview in this video of, you know, the astrology for this month. We're going to talk about what you can expect in terms of love and relationships, career and finance, and, you know, the world at large. I will have timestamps down below, so if you want to click ahead, you can, or just save it to your watch later playlist. Listen to it while, you know, you're getting some work done or being productive. Um, and yeah, but for some of you, you might want to sit down and watch it because I am going to have a lot of visual references in here that you might want to see. Um, if not, just listen to, okay? And if you stick to the very end, I'm going to have a spiritual homework assignment so that we can make the most out of this month, hopefully, and the energies um, that are available to us. Let me also say, usually in these uh, readings, I've been putting the important astrological dates, but in case you missed it, I already put that out in a separate video. So uh, if you missed it, yeah, I will have that at the tail end of this video so that you can just click on through and watch it if you like. But yeah, as a reminder, if you like this video, you got something positive out of it, and you want to see more like it, make sure that you like, share, subscribe, comment. Hate to say it, but I got to remind people, I know y'all are probably tired of hearing uh, ad nauseum from all the creators, but it really does help us when you, you know, do that. So those of you who've done that, thank you so much. Let's get on to it. All right, getting into just the general overview of this month. Um, you know, the themes that I'm seeing is uh, cataclysmic change, <laughs> having to face the facts, uh, rightly dividing the truth, which is, you know, having clarity, having wisdom. Uh, wisdom is applying truth accurately to life, okay? Uh, but the pain points I think this month are going to have to do with offensive truths. Um, it, you know, the truths that you need to hear versus what you want to hear, okay? And I think the big events that we have for this month to really look out for um, are, you know, the U.S., the United States, uh, second Pluto return. This is big talk in the astrological community. As a matter of fact, I'm probably going to put out a whole video on its own just dealing with that because that on its own is just like a whole video, okay? Um, I, I talked about it in the important dates video I've already released. I'll talk about it briefly here. Um, but yeah, ideally I'll do a whole nother video where we will go in even more depth and, and I'm thinking I'm even going to pull some cards. Okay. Um, another thing to pay attention to with this month is that there are portals for transcendence opening up this month. For those of you who believe in astrology, um, a lot of twos coming up this month, which are significant, but, um, let me say briefly, you know, with the second Pluto return for the United States happening on the 20th, which is, is, you know, a portal, by the way, to 20, 2022, right? Look at all the twos there. And then we have that astrological event occurring on that day, in addition to the numerology that's very relevant. Well, um, we are looking at what's being called transformation of a nation. And this is a very rare event. It's something that, you know, last time we had this astrologically was 246 years ago, July 4th, 1776, with the founding of this nation. So, um, yeah, I talk more about this in the important dates video, um, but in a nutshell, let me just say briefly that this is causing cataclysmic change with the nation's wealth and the wealth of its people. So these are big changes involving banking, government, global corporations. So I am going to put a warning out there that we are likely to see more supply chain issues coming up. 
um, more issues with social media, big media, big tech, lies, scandals surrounding those entities, well, it's unraveling further this month. And I think that we're going to see continued struggle with the travel industry against lockdowns, trying to get free from these lockdowns. And I don't know why, but as I was preparing for this video, I could hear somebody say they're coming for your pensions. And, you know, years ago, there were warnings from people that they're coming for your pensions. You know, those of you who have like 401ks and things like that, um, very vulnerable, okay? Um, and, and this has been something that has been forewarned for years, but it's almost like intuitively as an empath, it's that something, something is hitting a breaking point in February with people's pensions, people's 401ks, likely having to do with the fact, I mean, I just logged on to Twitter to look at what is trending and it's hashtag market crash, okay? Are we going to have a market crash in February? Well, yeah, so if you have 401ks that are obviously tied up into the stock market, uh, not good. And I have been warning people, just side note, reminder, I was warning people uh, over a year ago to get out of that because it's funny money. It's all rigged. It's all illusion. It's a house of cards. Um, I did for a time have one stock. <laughs> Uh, it was Coinbase stock, I will say. Okay, so based on cryptocurrency, Coinbase, and I've, I've already liquidated it because I saw this coming. So again, not financial advice, but I'm just going to tell you, you know, it's uh, getting a little bit murky in the water, if you know what I mean. And so if you are able to pull out, um, obviously, that's something you probably want to consider, um, not just with what's going on in the market right now, um, but, you know, what is going on with the astrology second house matters having to do with banking finance the um the nation's wealth the people's wealth okay what's also going to be brought out with this um second pluto return around the 20th is i, I do believe um issues having to do with hidden power or abuse misuse of power uh, will become more apparent um organized crime scandals the, the veiling of these things, I think, are become, becoming uh, less veiled or there's some kind of unveiling going on. Uh, people are getting more clarity, more truth during Aquarius season. Again, probably not what they want to hear, but what they need to hear. And it's forcing us to address misplaced trust and naivete regarding humans' proclivity towards greed and how fear has been used by ruling class elite to control populations, to coerce humanity for those ends. Now, on the same day as this, uh, you know, Pluto return on the 20th, there will be a conjunction in the South Node in, in Scorpio. So national values are significantly changing over whatever, whatever is brewing on the 20th. It is impacting our values bringing about some deep, intense transformation. And yeah, it's likely going to come through the release of secrets, revelations of deception concerning money and power. I'm going to say definitely be watching people like Biden, Hillary Clinton, Bill Gates. They are all Scorpios. Um, and a minor consideration, Governor Greg Abbott of Texas. I am a Texan, so you know I'm gonna be looking at what's going on with him as well. Um, but they're all Scorpios, okay? And with Scorpio in the South Node, at the same time of this uh, Pluto return, deep stuff, deep stuff, just pay attention uh, with what's going on on that day and also around about that time with these people. Now, for some, it might not be obvious it might uh, be unclear because Scorpio is an elusive energy. Um, so it could be very, very unclear as to who's doing the actual crime. But people are now starting to question more than before. They're starting to question authority, which is a very Aquarian, Uranian thing to do. Um, and because of this questioning, well, the truth is getting harder to hide. And definitely with Scorpio in the South Node, all the energies is just getting harder to hide. Mercury is also in that south node. So the public is beginning to realize that big daddy government isn't going to save them. Think about this. 
when is the last time you heard about getting a stimulus check? You know, and there was talk for a while that we were going to be moving from stimulus checks onto UBI, Universal Basic Income. When is the last time you heard anything about that? Crickets, right? And this is as we are getting news, like right now, it's trending on Twitter that there's a market crash. Oh, where's the government to help with that? Uh, silence, silence. So people are waking up to, wait a minute, uh, we're not in Kansas anymore. And uh, how do I get back home? Who's going to help me? Because, uh, you know, the man behind the curtain is not helping me get there. All right. Um, now, during this time, people might even also begin to realize that, you know, the same people they've been going to to rescue them, Big Daddy government, is quite possibly the same entity who created the problem in the first place. This is classic Hegelian dialectic, and those of you who are not familiar with that term, look it up, okay? This is a way to manipulate populations by creating a problem, an artificial crisis that's been manufactured for the purpose of creating a problem that draws people into saying, oh, we need a solution. And then the people in authority come in and bring it this offer of a solution that generates the wanted outcome, okay? Problem, solution, outcome. It's a manufactured problem to create a manufactured outcome by offering the solution that gets you to that end game. And so, yes, this is classic population control manipulation. Think about it, um, Obama, Rahm Emanuel, Hillary Rodham Clinton, I could go on. Ruling class elite have been on record repeatedly numerous times talking about never waste a good crisis. They parroted it ad nauseum, never waste a good crisis. And this is where basically they can get away with doing things that ordinarily they wouldn't get away with because, ah, oh, there's a crisis going on, right? Like how could they ever lock you down and run you out of business without the Rona, the Cerveza virus, right? Think about this, just think about it. Now, one thing I want to also remind you of, like I don't want you guys to get like super paranoid scared about the 20th uh, because, you know, I don't think that it's gonna be, I, I do think it's gonna be big, all right? But, you, you know, keep things in perspective here because we're looking at three hits of this throughout this year. Three hits of the Pluto return in 2022, which is going to be February 20th, July 10th, December 28th. We will also have another almost exact hit in October of 2023. Um, hopefully, I'll be doing videos on each of those to go more in depth when that time comes, God willing. Okay, but I'm sharing these timelines with you right now so you can understand the bigger picture. Um, that something here is unfolding. It's it's not just one meltdown in February, but it is the first of several to come this year and in 2023. And it is bringing about the collapse of an economic empire. Dare I say, a fraudulent one. And with this being a Pluto return, right? Return is, it's going to be exponentially more powerful than the first one that occurred in 1776 with the forming of this nation. So unfortunately, most Americans are financially illiterate and we can thank the public fool system for that. This is totally on purpose, by the way. The ruling class elite, the people who founded the Department of Education here in the United States, if you go back and look at the history of our educational system in the United States, um, they don't want you to be business owners, inventors, artists, creators. Uh, they want you to be good little worker bees for the corporations. They don't want you to know what they're doing with the economic system because if you knew, you would be self-empowered and you wouldn't be dependent upon them and you'd probably be out in the streets rioting if you had any clue what was going on with the monetary system. And they like that that way, okay? So when this event on the 20th occurs, um, most people are not even going to know what's hit them. Ignorance is bliss, right? Or is it until it isn't, right? Um, they're not going to know what has hit them nor what to do about it apart from the corporations and the government because of the dependency that has been created. And I told y'all when I did the astrology for this 
year of 2022, the annual astrology, with a south node in the eighth house and the north node, I'm sorry, south node in Scorpio, north node in Taurus, um, all these energies are pushing us to get off of this dependency and get into self-reliance and self-sufficiency. Well, here we go, right on track with the agenda, with the nodes. And this Pluto return is helping towards those ends because you're going to start realizing, oh, you want to keep, you want to keep running to big daddy government for, I don't know, stimulus, uh, UBI, whatever you fill in the blank. Well, it's, it's not really working so much anymore now, is it? Well, you, you want a job from these mega corporations who are requiring things out of you that are arguably unethical? Um, not going to work out anymore. You're going to have to find your feet, okay? It's sink or swim. And this is just right out the gate in February. We're already coming into it this year, uh, pushing this to happen. Unfortunately, uh, people are not going to be able to make sense of this reality. There's still a lot of cognitive dissonance going on. Uh, people not realizing that this entire time we've been living in an illusion. The financial system has been a house of cards. And um, I'm going to talk about this more in the what to expect section uh, having to do with uh, career and money, if you're interested, and also the world at large. Let me say um, with the numerology, okay, um, the transcendence portals that I was talking about, a lot of twos coming up this month, and the number two is a, is a number representing sensitivity, intuition, empathy. It can also have to do with impartiality because it deals with the differences like self versus other. 22 is two 11s, and 11 adds up to two, right? One plus one is two, okay? But anyway, 11 is a master number that's idealistic, futuristic. Think Aquarius times two, right? Aquarius is like 11th house uh, in the zodiac, all right? So... We've also got 222, uh, which is extreme transmutation of energy to transcend and transform. I don't want to sound airy-fairy to some of you. When I talk about a transcendence portal or these portals opening up in February, I'm not saying that Puff the Magic Dragon is going to come down with a big fairy wand and, you know, teleport you to another dimension. <laughs> okay. You know, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is these are really key dates where you can... Uh, do some prayer and meditation and uh, and perhaps get some divine downloads about the, where to go in this next level in your life to transcend the current uh, difficulties, restrictions, challenges, lessons, whatever. You know, 2 uh, plus 22, think of, you know, the 22nd of February is one of these portals, okay? Uh, 2 plus 22 plus 2022 equals 12, and 12 is four threes. Uh, also, you know, a number related to transcendence, very spiritual number, okay? Uh, 12 is also a number having to do with government, oddly, interestingly. So um, the gateway dates in February are February 2nd, 2022, which is, by the way, the day after the new moon in Aquarius, so set your intentions. Um, really good day to set your intentions, February 2nd of 2022. Another date is 2-11-2022, a good day for you to address any type of dualities in your life or contradictions in your life. Try to rightly discern um, or divide conflicting truths in your reality, like, wow, you know, this is what I want, but this is the way it is, um, or this is what I want, but this is what I need. These conflicting truths, like try to sort that out on the 11th of February, a really good day to do that. Then on February 20th, 2022, like I said, it's the first of three Pluto returns for uh, the United States, hitting exact. Um, and then February 22nd of 2022, well, quite possibly the most intense. Because as I said, that breaks down, you know, to four threes. My advice during these dates is to try to work through any emotions that come up that rise to the surface and any kind of blo uh, blocked uh, throat chakra issues that are coming up where you're feeling it's hard to really like speak your truth or to communicate um, and try also on an emotional level to connect with your longings for accomplishment, your ambitions, 
and try to seize any opportunities that come up so that you can achieve them. Okay, so let's talk about what to expect in terms of love and relationships. And I want to say, you know, on an individual and even collective level, uh, try to look at where Scorpio is showing up in your, your natal chart and the same with your loved ones, okay? Because that's showing you uh, where and how you feel like you're not being valued, What like what is having to be released in your life during this time. And it might force you to look at the way that you have structured your life. Is your life in alignment with your values? Or has there been some kind of misalignment, maladjustment? Um, and I gotta say that because, you know, the, the shadow side of Scorpio is this controlling, possessive type of behavior, a very suspicious type of evasive, elusive type of uh, behavior. And just be on the lookout for that coming through other people. Um, as this is in the South Node, you know, um, realize that this is a time when cowards are going to cave. And I don't use that word in a condemning way. I'm not trying to call anybody names. Let's call it what it is. Cowardice. You're lacking confidence. You're lacking integrity, right? When you resort to cowardice, all right? Um, and, and those are the people who are going to cave under, you know, pressure. And I want to remind you that, well, yes, there's going to be a lot of pressure this month, particularly around the 20th with that Pluto return in the United States. Um, and pressure reveals character. So, yes, we are probably, if secrets come out or, you know, it's revealed that there's been some duplicitous behavior, deception, um, criminal, I could go on, right? Uh, we might have cowards saying, explaining themselves away, justify, well, I was just following orders or I was just doing my job. This is what we heard during, you know, uh, the Nuremberg trials after World War II with Nazis. You know, why did you kill those people? Why did you put them in camps? Uh, why did you da -da -da, fill in the blank? Oh, because I was just following orders. I was just doing my job and we've got more of this. Um, we've also got people that are going to, you know, keep explaining away uh, why they're not responsible. Okay, uh, well, I had to do it. And again, I don't mean any condemnation for anybody who said this, um, but there's a lot of people who have subjected themselves to an experimental, you know what, wherein nobody, nobody is held liable for damages. Um, and they, they subjected themselves and maybe even their children to it, they complied um, so that they could have their freedom back, which didn't work out very well now, did it? Um, because they had to do it was the uh, the rationale. And, and, and the truth of the matter is, again, and I'm sorry if I'm ruffling people the wrong way, my Queen of Swords Aquarius is coming out here and let's just stick with the facts here. The cold hard truth is, no, you didn't have to do it. You were unwilling to give up your lifestyle you didn't want to be a whistleblower or you didn't want to walk away from that job because you meant that meant you were not going to be able to maintain that house, that car, you were going to lose your lifestyle. And so people are going to have to get really honest with themselves. And I'm telling you this as a viewer, pay attention, pay attention because as truths get unveiled and people are, you're going to see the shadow side, how people gave themselves permission, how they rationalized in their own head that it was okay to betray other people and to betray themselves. It reveals character. Uh, watch what people will do for money and what they have done for money. Watch how easy it is for people to let other people own them for a dollar. They'd rather defer power to others, then step into it. Why? Because with freedom, Aquarius, comes responsibility. And the sad fact of the matter is most people do not want it. If freedom requires responsibility, they'll, they'll, they'll go without the freedom. This is a sad truth. And I know this from being an Aquarian. <laughs> oh, do I know it? I know it. Okay. So, um, some people are going to, you know, naively ask, uh, but how can this many people pull, pull off a large scale lie as these truths come out? You know, it's the naivete that I was talking about earlier. And, you know, I want to remind you that it's a bunch of people following orders 
It's a bunch of people doing what they're told, um, you know, not questioning authority, uh, not rocking the boat, uh, fear of conflict, fear of confrontation. And, you know, there's a quote from Edmund Burke that goes a little something like this. The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. That's how you pull off such a large scale lie. We've got a lot of passive people who don't want responsibility. And that's how you get yourself complied out of freedom. There's going to be a lot of financial pressures this month and in the months to come that are driving people against themselves and others. And I want to warn you about this in your relationships. People who are unaware of who's really to blame with these financial pressures are going to misdirect their anger. The currency has been debased and people's reality has been shattered and this is all by design. They don't want you to know who or what the real problem is. Why your dollar doesn't go as far as it did back in 1970 something. No matter how much they raise the wages, we can never seem to keep up with inflation. Why? It's the debasement of our currency. Again, people don't understand this because they've purposefully been left ignorant in the public fool system about the economic house of cards we've been living in. But I digress. Yeah, there's been a lot of mass formation psychosis, and some of you might have saw that was a trending hashtag uh, on Twitter, and the whole subject got stirred up by Dr. Malone on Joe Rogan. I believe I, in the last month's astrology, I told y'all to go check out that video. I even put a link in the comments down below so you could watch it on Rumble in its entirety. But my gosh, that set off this wildfire of, you know, conversation about mass formation psychosis, wherein Dr. Malone is talking about how the isolation that we saw in 2020 with lockdowns and, uh, people being quarantined um, created created this unique psychological situation for so many people where, you know, um, it was not only being deprived of social connection, which affects us on a psychological and even physical uh, level, but then the being fear driven with all the fear porn in the media. And that is how um, you're able to cultivate people moving in lockstep with complying with the loss of their own liberty. I want to remind you that the darker side of Aquarius is losing yourself and others, losing your individuality in groupthink. And Aquarius is often misunderstood in this respect. I think I will say, you know, as an older Aquarian, in all honesty, I can reflect back in my life where I was obviously not as mature and involved and I was more prone to doing this type of thing and I wanted to be in groups and I was involved in a lot of groups and to some degree I still am. There's a value to it. It's a very Aquarian thing to do. However, as you get older and evolve and you mature more as an Aquarian, you begin to realize that unity should never uh, diminish your individuality. Um, if, if that's happening, you're not in a good group. You're not in a healthy group, okay? Individual freedoms should be for all. That's that's the ideal. It's we're, We shouldn't be going for this mass conformity, which is more of a Capricornian thing, not Aquarian at its highest expression. And again, also Aquarius is about uniqueness, whereas with Capricorn, it's more of a standardization. And, you know, I also want to say that a lot of times Aquarius is confused with being... <laughs> See, I get kind of gets cringy for me when a lot of people who are not Aquarians, they will describe Aquarius as being detached, unemotional, robotic, um, you know, and I understand that slightly where that's coming from. Yes, we are co-ruled by Saturn, which is ruled by Capricorn. And again, earlier degrees of Aquarius, you probably see more of that stuff being the case. Okay. Um, but I like to argue that uh, Aquarius is not emotionally detached. Aquarius is containing emotion. We are social creatures. We're not robots. I want to use this as an example, okay? I want to show you cards in tarot that convey Aquarius. And this ties into, you know, 
relating to people this month, okay? Love and relationships. And particularly if you're Aquarius or you know Aquarians, important, all right? So in tarot, this is a classic depiction of Aquarius with a star card. Notice this is an individual. It's, right, it's not the lover's card, you know, which is, uh, you know, Libra. I'm sorry, uh, Gemini. <laughs> um, it's, you know, an individual, a human. And what is she doing? She's in water, and water is emotion. Water is spirit. And she's gathering it up. She's containing it to pour it out to humanity, okay? And you look at some other decks, other translations, and you get the same thing pouring out that water, containing it, it's emotion, all right? Um, here's another one. So I wanted to spell myths about Aquarius being this kind of robotic whatever, or being uh, caught up in, uh, I, I, I really get cringy when I, when I hear people in the astrological community or even tarot uh, convey Aquarius as being um, into like politically into socialism. Absolutely no. That is the darker aspect of Aquarius. That is losing yourself in others. Um, right. And we don't see other people here. We see an individual who's not detached, who is containing emotion because she's not emotionally messy. She is emotional. Let's also remember Aquarius is the water bearer. So we bear water. We have emotion. We're trying to share it with others. But this is an individual. This is a human. This is not a robot, okay? Um, I'm bringing all of this up because I think it's relevant to all of us. You know, where we need to ask ourselves, like, how can we get back to our individuality? How can we get back to our humanity in Aquarius season? How can we connect more emotionally and spiritually without getting emotionally messy. These are all Aquarian thoughts and ideals, and I think Aquarius at the highest uh, expression. It's about us also connecting to people on an emotional, spiritual level um, discriminately, not indiscriminately, okay? I really feel like that's what's conveyed in the cards and that's what people are not knowing when to connect and when to disconnect. Having the discernment of the truth and, and, the, and the wisdom and the clarity in our relationships. I'm gonna make a, connect, a prediction here that, um, and, and, and I'll take any pleasure in, in making this prediction. Again, another raw truth moment. I, 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 it's gonna rub some people the wrong way but let's keep it real here. I do believe that this is a year where there are gonna be a lot of people who off themselves and their relationships. And I know that's a very bold statement. Um, I think the reason why it's going to happen is because what used to work is no longer gonna work. And when they can't figure out why and how to fix it, it's game over. If they get to a place where everything that they believed in turns out to be a lie, it's paradigm shifting, if not paradigm shattering. And they're gonna start turning on themselves and other people. I'm not saying you're gonna do it or your loved ones are gonna do it. I'm saying be on the lookout because there's a lot of people who are not ready for what's coming. They do not have the intestinal fortitude to stomach the truth that's getting delivered over this year. So my advice on this is to be as compassionate as possible. I think in extreme cases, you're gonna see people having some psychotic breaks with reality because they're losing their sense of reality. You have to understand people, some people are so internally insecure, they are so hopelessly dependent upon the system that they're going to fight to keep it alive, kind of like Morpheus said in The Matrix during the, the scene with the woman in the red dress, for those of you who don't remember that, okay? They're so hopelessly dependent on the system, and when they can't lean upon that system, right, Scorpio, South Node, government, corporations, when they can't depend on them anymore, 
and they don't have the internal strength, North Node in the in Taurus, right? To find their feet to swim, they're gonna sink. And I'm sorry, I'm just I'm not trying to speak that over anybody, right? I'm just speaking plainly that if you don't have the strength internal and you can't rely on strength external, beware of this within yourself and the people that you know. Try to be compassionate because there's a lot of people during this time with these energies that are gonna get disoriented, lost, scattered, feeling like they're living in a twilight zone. Oh, they are, they are, and it's not gonna be easy. And some of you already know, you've been dealing with this. You've been giving them the facts and they call you names or they imply that you're crazy. Heck, I've been dealing with it on my channel, right? Getting abandoned. I've had a lot of people leave my channel. Oh, well, I'm queen of swords. I'm going to keep speaking the truth. You know, I'm Aquarius. I'm going to hold on to my uniqueness, my authenticity. You don't like it? Get to step in, you know? Um, and 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 I've, I've not only had people, you know, bail off of my channel for that, but I've had people leave comments implying that I'm Neptuned out, that I've got Neptune all around me. I recently, that was the latest thing, that you're surrounded by Neptune. Holy crap. Okay. Well, I know for a fact, given the astrology, we got a lot of Jupiter, Neptune, which is big illusions occurring in second house having to do with money in the natal chart of the United States. So yeah, where's the real Neptune going on with me or with this financial system? I think I know the answer anyway. Um, when people start getting confronted with reality versus their false reality, the, um, the real paradigm versus the false paradigm, uh, their coping mechanism is going to be to gaslight by calling you crazy or implying that you're crazy. Um, and, and why? Because they're regurgitating what's been done to them over the last two years. They've been gaslit ad nauseum on the media over the last two years. And so they're just parroting what they've been conditioned brainwashed to do. It's like battered wife syndrome. They're going to keep going back to the abuse, making excuses, or maybe even taking the blame for it, protecting and covering up for the abuser and the abuse. Why? Because they're weak, they're insecure, they're character deficient people, and they find strength in the herd, in dependency on others, because they don't have the internal strength developed within themselves. They're going to go with whoever the winning team seems to be, the moneyed, powered interests, okay? And so, you know, if you're dealing with people in, like this in your personal life, you're going to probably have to accept, as have I, that some people do not have the intestinal fortitude to stomach what's being served. And it takes incredible strength of character and courage to admit that you were wrong and then to do the right thing about it especially when doing so is going to cost you your job, your lifestyle, your status, maybe your friends and family, your reputation, possibly even your bank account. Frankly, most people don't have it within them. I'm sorry to say a lot of people don't. So I want to encourage you to keep speaking the truth in love, regardless of all of this. It's all we can do, but realize you can't win them all. It's not your responsibility. You're a messenger of truth. What people, all you do, all you got to do is deliver it and live life according to your conscience. And what people do with it is on them. You are not responsible for what people do with the truth. You're only responsible for what you do with the truth, which is to speak it and live in accordance with it. But yes, yeah, some people are too deeply entrenched and enmeshed with the lies. So I want to encourage you to ally yourself with people who are humbly seeking the truth and want to know if they're wrong, right? This might be a way, you know, if you get into conversations this month with people and, you know, and they do ask you questions, you know, really like slow them down. So do you, do you really want to know the truth about that? You really want to know what I think about that? And, and get them to search themselves. People need to search themselves. Do you really want to know? Or are you just looking for somebody to agree with you and tell you, yeah, you're right. You're right. Those tinfoil hat wearers don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, those crazy conspiracy theorists. <laughs> you're so right. Or do you want to know the truth? Very revealing month. All right, let's talk about what we can expect this month in terms of career and money. Well, uh, we're going to continue to see um, more manipulation, distortion, gaslighting going on with the financial markets. 
there's been a lot of what's called fear trading in the markets. Um, a lot of people have been getting out of the markets, you know, as did I. I mentioned earlier, I just, all I had was one stock because I think it's, I've known for a very long time the stock market is rigged, you know. But I did get in on one stock and I liquidated it in, I think, early, no, late December, yeah. But that's partly because of the astrology of what's coming up, you know, around the 20th. Uh, with that second Pluto return hitting our, our second house in the United States. And you can see it's already brewing. I mean, I'm filming this on the 26th of January, and you can already see the buildup with the market. So I tell you what, though, if you are, um, if you're kind of locked into the stock market, I will give you a, a, a humorous tip. Uh, there is a a profile on Twitter. I think it's Nancy Pelosi's portfolio tracker <laughs> is what it's called. And... Um, and they talk about, you know, what she's trading. And as we all know, the um, people in Congress uh, come out of that career filthy rich. Um, they, they leave it far richer than they entered in. Why? Because they're privy to insider trading secrets. And so, yeah, people are, you know, putting together kind of these parody accounts where they're tracking what people like Nancy Pelosi are doing uh, with their, their trades. And uh, yeah, you might, you know, on a funny, kind of funny note, like look at what she's doing because that's quite telling. Another thing, you know, in addition, with, in addition to the stocks dropping recently, uh, part of that drop has included Twitter. And I mentioned about a year ago, I advised y'all, I believe when I was doing the 2021 astrological report, that anybody who was in big tech, social media stock, you know, like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you know, you, you fill in the blank um, just to get out of it because I predicted in the 2021 astrology that they would take a hit. And sure enough, um, Twitter stock has dropped in half over the last year. And I warned y'all to get out. I warned y'all. So uh, just a reminder that... Um, here it is, you know, um, and now we've got Facebook, which is part of big tech stock, uh, now going on record admitting in court that their fact checkers aren't factual, but opinion based. So yeah, that's, that's not very helpful for their stocks. Uh, they're losing credibility. People are dumping their accounts on Facebook. I dumped mine in 2017. So not good, not good at all. Um, I, I don't really see a good, I don't see it turning around. And, and anytime soon, if at all. There's also been a lot of um, economic warfare going on, I think for those of you uh, who are employees, okay, uh, with the employee vax mandates, you know, there's we've been seeing workers being manipulated, extorted, discriminated, argu arguably, uh, with Biden's mandates, despite the fact that the, su the Supreme Court overthrew these mandates. And what's interesting is that despite this ruling in the Supreme Court, you have some companies who are saying, I don't care, we're gonna follow it anyway. So I heard of this company, for example, Carhartt, which I really don't know anything about the company. Uh, I think it's a regional thing. I'm in Texas, so I have no experience with it, but I think it's up north. Anyway, they decided that despite the Supreme Court overthrowing that you know mandate, well, they're just gonna follow it anyway and they're getting blowback now from people over that. Um, but then you, you look at a company like Starbucks where their response to the ruling was, all right, we're not going to require this of our employees. So uh, they're going to go on and follow the Supreme Court ruling. So very interesting to see how these companies are responding. And again, just observe, you know, the companies that are um, choosing to follow Biden rather than the Supreme Court ruling. I think also another interesting dynamic to observe, um, I think more positive observation is what's going on with the vax and unvax employees at these companies that are holding on to the, the mandates. Okay, uh, for example, one thing I'm seeing is a lot more solidarity between the vax and the unvaxed where you're getting people who are vaxxed. Uh, two, or, two things are happening uh, with, with many people that are vaxxed. I'm not obviously going to say all of them are doing it, but there's a, a good number of, of vaxxed employees who are now getting to a place where they're either saying, you know, I've had it. I'm, I'm tired of all these boosters and it's never going to end. And I just I only did this to make this go away. And now I find out that this is just opening up um, 
an unending list of, you know, booster upon booster. It's never going to end. I'm constantly going to be in, in negotiating and renegotiating for my freedom, for my job, because they're always going to be another booster. You know, as soon as I fully get vaccinated, they're going to have another one that no longer makes me fully vaccinated. Like, where does it end? What? I, we got to draw the line somewhere. And so, you know, you have some people getting fed up on that front. Um, also, I'm seeing with Vax um, that they're actually starting to work in solidarity with their unfax employee uh, co-workers i should say because they don't like what they're seeing unvaxed co-workers going through and for reasons of integrity character they're just like you know what i cannot be a part of this i cannot work for an employer who is willing to do this to people and their families and so you're you're actually seeing some vaxed uh, employees that are quitting, walking on jobs, saying, you know what, if you're going to get rid of them, then I'm going with them. And I'm like, bravo, you know, this is fantastic. We are uh, on the downside, though, seeing more staffing shortages. Um, you know, that's continuing. Uh, and, and again, I was talking to y'all about this with the astrology in late fall with the great resignation. Well, it, it's just continuing. It's just amplifying. And I'm hoping to see that this is actually going to create more parallel economies emerging where the uh, unvaxxed and, and in the people who would like to work with them are uh, forming co-ops or coalitions. They're working together to render services independent of these corporations, these insurance companies, these government regulatory agencies, institutions who are imposing, all right, the pharmaceutical companies, the OSHAs, the whatevers that are coming in and interjecting your, all these rules that, well, you've got to do this to your employees or we're not going to, you know, give you your little gravy train. We're not going to give you kickbacks. We're not going to do business with you. All these ways that we've seen corporations, companies getting manipulated through money to manipulate their employees, um, right? You're just totally getting free and independent of this. Now, on more of an even personal level on the home front, we are seeing, we've been seeing food shortages since, you know, late fall of last year. I was talking to y'all about the Australian truckies last year, uh, but now we're seeing more of it specifically in February with um, the Canada-US trucker strike getting planned. Um, in response to the VAX mandates. And so, you know, this is obviously going to impact the supply chain, which is already weakened here. And again, you know, battered wife syndrome, uh, there's, there's people who have been in denial about this. Like case in point, I put out a video uh, in early January about stockpiling to get around the inflation, to get around the uh, supply chain issues. I was warning about this over a year ago, okay? In 2021, I was warning, and really late 2020, I was warning about this, okay? But I finally put out a video this January, and you can see in the comments, there are some people who um, are in denial about supply chain issues, saying that there's no problem or there's no inflation, when obviously there is. We have the dollar store is not a dollar store anymore; it's a buck twenty-five store, you know. And Little Caesars pizza is no longer five bucks. Okay, let's think about this, folks. Uh, let's get with reality. But you, you know, here's a cognitive dissonance going in, and the battered wife syndrome with people telling you that you're crazy. There's nothing going on. Blah blah blah. Well. Uh, Y'all know what I'm going to say. I've already, I've been saying it for over a year now. People are either going to stay in denial or they're going to wake the beep up. Okay. Wake the flock up. <laughs> wake the flock up. Okay. Um, Bitcoin. Um, mm, you know, obviously, you know, crypto is taking a hit with these markets, um, you know, and um, I, I was warning um, in January that I was not going to be buying any more crypto uh, because of what's coming up in February with the second Pluto return in, in the second house. Um, and here we go, you know, and, you know, generally as Bitcoin goes, so does the rest of the crypto market. Uh, what I am seeing interestingly is that it appears as though Bitcoin is going to be the next battlefront for climate change. Um, we're going to be hearing a lot more talk about how Bitcoin is bad for the environment. And um, this is going to be how they justify coming in and regulating it, which the government so badly wants to do. Um, and 
so just get ready for it, you know, uh, but you have you have some battle lines already getting drawn like here in Texas. Um, we're making this a Bitcoin mining friendly state. And I recently saw another politician. I don't know if it was in Michigan or Minnesota. Somebody was saying that they're going to try to make that state uh, more Bitcoin mining friendly. OK, um, but I, I watched some videos on this on how valid that argument is. And it's just smoke and mirrors. It's all a cover story. By the way, climate change is a carbon tax scheme. Um, you know, if they want, if the government wants to get control of anything, oh, it's bad for the environment. Let's regulate it. Let's control it. OK, and, and they're already getting started. That's why you're seeing people like Hillary Clinton and other politicians getting out there talking about climate change um, in regards to crypto. Reminder, you know, that they're coming coming for your pensions, they're coming for your 401ks, they're coming for your crypto, right? By the way, um, it's been said, you know, that there's there's a lot of polls right now of public sentiment regarding the economy, indicating that about half the country thinks that everything's just going great. Uh, everything's doing well, but they don't understand that um, that is an illusion. Uh, this is built on a house of cards that are provided by money printers. OK, so that is hiding the market volatility. Q&E is what is helping with that, the money printing um, and also inflation, which is hidden taxes. So there's a lot of illusion, fakery, and the consequences are inevitable. Eventually, you have to pay the piper. Eventually, you know, you wake up from the dream and you got to deal with reality. So historically, uh, side note, fiat currency always fails. And we've been on a fiat currency money system since 1971 when we got off the gold standard. Essentially, when dollars prior to 1971 were backed by gold, they no longer are. And so since 1971, the buying power of the dollar, the U.S. dollar, has been debased because it's no longer backed by gold. It's backed by money printing. That's nothing. It's, it's backed by faith. <laughs> Mere belief. It's a religion. Okay? So um, will there be a fiat fake currency correction? Um, is a question, and at what point will the artificial attempts to disguise the debasement of the currency uh, no longer no longer work? And I think that um, it is already starting to open up, and definitely with the astrology of this month and that second Pluto return, we are beginning to see that the collapse of the dollar it's already here. Okay. Um, and I think this is why also one of many reasons why we're seeing more talk of CBDCs. The government wanting to have its own cryptocurrency, its own digital dollar. They can't entirely take over Bitcoin. They can regulate it. They can try to tax it. They can try to track it. They can do that kind of stuff. But they'll never entirely have control of Bitcoin. So they've got to create their own. And you're seeing a lot of countries now doing this, creating digital currency, digital debt. Because the fiat system, the paper system is collapsing. And so realize this, that a lot of people who are fighting right now are fighting over a false reality. While behind the scenes, you've got people who are getting subsidized, like the Black Rocks, who are buying up uh, properties. You have families that are fighting within their homes over you know, resources and money and economic pressures that are going on in the world, not understanding that while people are losing their resources, property, the money is being debased. You've got people, large institutional investors that are getting subsidized by the government, taxpayer subsidized, like BlackRock. They're going out buying all these properties. There is a wealth transfer going on against the middle class, transforming us more into a renter nation. And I think over time, as this goes on, it's becoming more and more obvious to commoners how problematic the banking system really is. And I like Gregory Manorino. He's got a saying um, that he says quite often, there is no money heaven. Money doesn't just disappear. It moves. And so, you know, if you or your family or you're, you're witnessing other families going through fighting over resources, this month or in the months to come. Remember this, money doesn't just disappear. 
it moves. We're dealing with a wealth transfer coming from the middle class. And again, that takes us back to World Economic Forum, WEF, and their little saying, you will own nothing and be happy. But when you own nothing and you aren't happy, what are you going to do? Are you going to blame others because you think, well, they didn't work hard enough and they need to work harder? Why do you need to work like a dog, like a slave to live a, a decent life? You know, why? Um, because there's a bunch of smoke and mirrors going on. This is never, you are not here to be a robot. You are not here to be a slave. You should not have to work this hard. Do you think they had to work this hard in the 1970s to buy homes and cars? Absolutely not. And that's because the currency was not debased at that point. That's because, or at least not to the level it is now, and that's because they weren't dealing with inflation at the level that they're dealing with. You can keep trying to raise wages all you want. Yes, I'm speaking to the left, but if you don't address the debasement of the currency, if you don't address inflation, inflation and you don't get us off of fiat currency, you, get, you, you don't get us back onto sound money that is backed by something tangible and real, you're not ever going to get out of this. You can, you can keep raising the wages all you want, and families are going to be fighting over resources, not knowing who the real culprit of the problem is, nor how to fix it. So again, reminding you with Mercury in the South Node, public is realizing at the same time that Big Daddy government isn't helping them anymore. Oh, and maybe Big Daddy government is the reason they're in the problem in the first place. All right, let's talk about the world at large. Are we going to see the end of this nonsense? Um, is the narrative unraveling? I think it is. I think the narrative is unraveling, but it's like, oh my God, what are we coming into now? Um, we have seen hundreds of thousands of people protesting all over the world against mandates. Oh my gosh. Um, and massive censoring of this in the media all over the world, um, in Europe, in Canada, in the United States. The censorship has just been incredible. Um, and, and now, like I said, we're coming into a trucker strike involving Canada, US, Mexico um, on these mandates. As the Supreme Court is striking down the, man, the Biden mandate on vaccines. So um, we're seeing a lot of continued uh, far left hypocrisy on full parade with like AOC preaching about wearing masks and avoiding traveling and avoiding uh, the state of Florida, but then she was caught doing all three, okay? So we could go on so many examples of this, like with Nancy Pelosi, Gavin Newsom, the Obamas, Biden. Oh, recently, you know, um, out in England, uh, I believe that Boris Johnson was caught engaging in this kind of stuff. So it's too many people here to list, but the more that this kind of rules for thee but not for me type stuff is going on with the ruling class elite, particularly on the left, uh, left-leaning people, you know, it is really opening up people's eyes to the hypocrisy that, wait a minute, these people actually don't really believe in the lip service that they're giving people. They don't, they don't practice what they preach. What's really going on here? So, um, you know, what's the response from the left to backpedal or to dig their heels in? Well, I mean, recently with Boris Johnson in England, remarkably, on record to drop the COVID restrictions. Beautiful, bravo. But a lot of people are saying, well, that's because he knows that his head's gonna be on a stick if he doesn't. Like he's basically done for politically. The people have had just had it with him. Uh, out in the Czech Republic, you know, they're dropping the mandatory vax policy. In France, I saw a video of um, a group of people, a large group of people protesting out there, throwing dirt and seaweed at a politician who had been, you know, putting forth these vaccine mandates. And then I saw a beautiful video of uh, Trudeau uh, out in Canada getting called out as a globalist. And, you know, a Canadian on, you know, public, I believe public broadcast TV called him out saying, you sold us out to globalism. You're not working for Canada. You're working for globalists. And man, we're seeing more and more people uh, confronting these politicians and make them, you know, start shaking in their boots. And they've got to make a decision. Are you going to backpedal or are you going to dig your heels in? And yes, it seems that there are some countries that are digging their heels in, like Australia and Germany. Now, you know, doing totally opposite where they're going on record saying things like, you know, in Australia, uh, there's a politician on record saying you may only leave home for three reasons, really. Like you got to check in with mommy, the nanny state, you know. 
Um, there's also, I, I've watched footage uh, showing the police swarming and tackling and arresting like grandmas. Uh, one particular elderly woman who was just out walking her dog in Germany and the police took her down, you know, and that was quite disgusting, but it just shows you what is happening with gun controlled countries like Australia or where there's strict gun control, Germany, uh, the people really don't uh, have any way to keep their uh, tyrannical governments in check. There, there's no, when there's no fear of the people, the, the government can get very much out of control. And this is a prime example. And there are other reasons as well. It's not just gun control. I mean, arguably, I have heard that the, one of the big issues with Australia is that they're owned. They're owned by a lot of uh, globalist corporate entities. We do have a lot of that going on in the United States as well. The corporatism, the uh, merging of corporate interests with government. You see this a lot with, right, with the Pfizer execs being in cahoots with people in CDC or, you know, the same people that worked at Pfizer are now over at CDC um, or the NIH or whatever. There's a lot of incestuous relationships going on between government and um, corporations uh, buying off access and influence um, if they're not, you know, or with lobbyists buying uh, with through campaign contributions, buying our politicians. And so uh, from what I hear in Australia, it's, it's basically going on way out of control worse than the United States. But what's going on in the United States right now? Um, well, uh, I, I think a lot of uh, smoke and mirrors, a lot of distraction going on where, you know, instead of this dig your heels in or backpedal with the whole, you know, survey of virus rhetoric. We're now being having our attention shifted onto uh, starting a proxy war, arguably, with Russia in Ukraine. And so, yeah, there's a lot of speculation that this really has nothing to do with the official we reasons. Big shocker, right? Um, do we get any? Thing that can be taken at face value from the mainstream media here in the United States anymore. I doubtful. But it is all to distract from Biden's failures. And so, again, you know, this is bringing, taking people back down memory lane not too long ago with um, Afghanistan. You know, what happened then, where those were our people out there in Afghanistan versus now the situation in Ukraine, that's their people. So why are we so concerned about what's going on in Ukraine when this guy can't even get it right how to deal with our people in Afghanistan? Uh, most people post-Afghanistan see Biden as a major failure in terms of military policy. And, you know, it just really begs the question of why can't the president of the United States mind his own damn business? Really, why? There is a myth, I believe, that the government cares about people. Actually, I think really they care about their corporate owners. The reality is, what I've heard from rumors, is that what is happening in the Ukraine right now is they're trying to rewrite the borders of Europe. And this is going to be the third time it's happened because the first and second time it happened was during the Obama administration when Biden was there as a vice president. And those of you who like to research things, look into this. Last time we heard about all this Ukrainian stuff was when Biden was in office as vice president. And here we go again, stirring the pot. Why can't you just mind your own business here in the United States? Why are you going back over there? And another interesting side note is Hunter Biden has had some interesting business dealings and relations with the people out in the Ukraine. So that family, that Biden family, is very financially connected to the Ukraine. Oh, but you want to sign up the United States for this. Think that through. Uh, what, what's really going on there? It seems obvious as time goes on that the media and the District of Corruption, D.C., is in cahoots. Be careful as they're doing the warmongering and they're beating the battle drums of let's go to war, let's go to war, let's get involved with all of this. Look at the people, the experts that they have on news media research because this has gone on for so long. Uh, when they're trying to propagandize uh, the United States and rally Americans to support going to war and engaging in more um, global warfare, right, when we have our own business here in the United States to mind, uh, when they're trying to stimulate through propaganda this interest, they get these uh, 
these experts on who come to find out have ties to the military industrial complex. They work for the Lockheed Martins. They, they work for the Boeings. They work for, you know, big companies that have big military contracts and that stand to profit from warfare. And these are the experts that come on and tell us, yeah, I think we should go to war over there, you know, and again, careful about these experts that media is putting out. I do feel, again, there's an unveiling of all this stuff. People are waking up and it's getting more and more the case that America is just mocking the media and the District of Corruption and specifically Biden seeing him as weak. So is the COVID narrative crumbling? Well, actually, I think it is. And I think here in the United States, the response is let's create a distraction with warfare. Uh, the reality is here in the U.S., we've recently had Project Veritas leaking military documents, revealing that uh, the military, they knew about the origins of COVID and gain-of-function research involving NIH and Fauci and potential vaccine treatments that were suppressed. By the way, since that happened, there have been other leaks. There's other people coming out um, with more information. I mean, it gets juicier by the day, <laughs> if not the week, you know. Um, and James O'Keefe, who is uh, head of Project Veritas, recently released a video saying, quote, I'm not suicidal. I love my life. And mind you, this is not only after these leaks, but after the FBI raid that he went through, where um, his private attorney privileged conversations were leaked to the media that he's actually in the middle of a lawsuit with, okay? So um, Joe Rogan was commenting on this whole scenario with James O'Keefe and Project Veritas, and he said, why are people blindly dismissive of Project Veritas's official government documents? Oh, it's coming from Project Veritas. We can't listen to it. Uh, what is the problem with people? You know, what, these are official government documents, but you can't read them. You can't pay any attention to them because it was Project Veritas who leaked it. And by the way, I encountered a conversation with somebody like this. You know, I tried to share the documents with somebody and was told, you really got to stop sharing that Project Veritas stuff with me. Like, the, it's throw the baby out with the bathwater. And again, the, the, the brainwashing if I would just show, I guess, the military documents and never mention Project Veritas, maybe, uh, you know, people would pay more attention, maybe. But you say that Project Ver Veritas, there's so much stigma attached to it, it's pretty bad. Another thing I'm noticing going on with this crumbling COVID narrative is that uh, the COVID numbers are being conflated, and that's becoming more obvious and apparent, uh, where recently the CDC director was being interviewed on... Um, media and was asked to clarify those numbers of, you know, the people who are hospitalized with or for COVID, right? Because there's a difference. Did you, did you go to the hospital for COVID or did you go there and they tested you? You went there for something entirely different, but they tested you and then they found that you have, you are with it. Are, are you there with it or from, are you there because of COVID? Okay. So uh, th th these are two different things, right? And uh, getting conflated. Um, you might be there at the hospital for a gunshot wound or a car accident, um, but they're going to put you down as COVID. And so when this was pointed out in the media um, with the CDC director, she said, well, I'll get back to you on that data. Uh, when? Is this going to disappear? Like, are, we, are people with a short attention span going to forget and not circle back, as Jen Psaki likes to say? Let's circle back on that. Where's that data on that, okay? Well, and also CDC director is now admitting that COVID tests are not meant to be used to measure contagiousness. Goalposts getting moved, stories changing, uh, ooh, ooh, these are all indicators of being gaslit, being lied to, um, but are people paying attention? Are people adding it up? I think slowly more and more people are. By the way, these, these um, COVID tests being used to measure contagiousness, well, that's being brought up because remember, back when they were isolating people for, you know, 10 days, now it's gone down to five days, um, they're backpedaling based on what science with these isolation requirements, right? This is coming from the trust the science people. And speaking of science, we've got a major uh, medical journal now being now calling for raw data on COVID to be released and it's been hidden from the public. And Pfizer, mind you, has been trying to seal uh, vaccine safety data. They asked a judge to seal the vaccine safety data for up to 75 years. Red flags should be going off in people's head big time, okay? 
Uh, the judge, by the way, ordered it to be unsealed after eight months. A lot of people are arguing that's still too damn long. We do have a lot more doctors speaking out. I mean, I recently uh, saw that uh, there's a doctor in Houston that uh, they try to blackball and blacklist um, because she was trying to treat patients as she saw fit rather than having to comply and conform to what the insurance companies are saying or what the government or OSHA or whomever or these different controlling institutions and agencies are, you know, controlling these doctors and what they can do. Uh, she spoke out in Houston and it looks like she's fighting back pretty well. But of course, better known, you have Drs. Peter McCullough and Dr. Robert Malone who were on, you know, Joe Rogan's podcast. And, you know, interestingly, not mainstream media. Why are these doctors or doctors like them uh, not, not getting interviewed on there? Because, well, they're uh, challenging the official narrative. Again, another red flag that should let you know we don't have an unbiased media. We don't have impartial, objective. We don't have journalism in this country anymore. Um, we've got one particular narrative being parroted ad nauseum. And then what is happening in return is that, you know, Twitter suspended Dr. Robert Malone's account the day before it broadcast. And just as a side note, <laughs> recently, uh, Neil Young tried to get Joe Rogan taken off of Spotify. That backfired. Spotify went ahead and took it. It's in the process of taking him off right now, okay? You see that this, um, th this refusal to let people listen to all sides and make up their mind for themselves. And because of that, there are some people who are just trying to push back. Like we had Congressman Troy Niels who submitted that Joe Rogan podcast transcript to the congressional records. There's definitely a, a war on truth waging right now, but all of this is really fueling mistrust in media because I mean, obviously, and I think it, it's fair to say that Joe Rogan's audience is winning because it's now 13 times the size of CNN's. By the way, CNN has had so many pedophile scandals coming out it's like absolutely crazy. I think last time I counted, I don't know, like three people, producers there uh, that are caught up in pedophile scandals. So very disturbing stuff. And it's like, where are you getting your news from? And uh, don't worry about what they're talking about. Worry about what they're not talking about. Uh, worry about what you're not allowed to hear. Um, that's really where you're going to find the truth. Um, but on the, on the positive side, it looks like uh, the truth is winning with Joe Rogan. And I got to say, I haven't always been really pro. I don't agree with everything Joe Rogan says. I got to say that. But, um, you know, when he's interviewing people who have a something other than the official narrative and, and we're able to kind of flesh out a, a more balanced discussion rather than people who are just saying the same thing, uh, that seems like more honest work than what we're getting at places like CNN. And even on, you know, social media where there's so much censorship going on there. And as I mentioned before, Facebook has recently admitted in court that their fact checkers are not factual. It's opinion based. They had to admit that in court. So I want to um, mention to you, those of you who are interested in, um, you know, mixing politics with spirituality, which is what I'm doing here. Um, I want to share with you some channels where you can get more of this insight. Um, Tarot by Janine. Um, she really is awake. I really enjoy watching her work. Um, I'm inspired by her to tell you the truth. I'm probably going to be putting out more political tarot content over February um, because she's just been very inspiring to me. But yes, go check her out, Tarot by Janine. And um, also, um, if you're into like astro crypto, where people are mixing cri cryptocurrency trading market information with the astrology, financial economic astrology, then uh, look at Keon the One or Crypto Kid um, and Marin Altman, very good content channels to check out for that. All right, so let's have a bit of a spiritual homework assignment for the month, hopefully to make the most out of it, given all the energies here. A lot of tough things going on. I mean, uh, it, particularly around the 20th, as we build up to that date, um, I'm going to say, you know, the higher use of these difficult energies is probably to look at what is hindering you. You're, you're really going to be shown that during this month. 
look at what's hindering you and consider how you can cut it out of your life. And yes, if that means that you need to leave a job, a residence, a work location, um, if that's going to release you from the limitations, then consider, you know, carefully consider um, ideas on how you can do this so that you can get the expansion in your life that you really need, given the current restrictions that are upon it. Somehow, reshaping ideas on responsibility is really key this month. Um, the higher use of this is getting you to see what you need to let go of in your life and what's not working for you. And in preparation for March, um, I do want to caution you, there's some energies coming up in March where um, astrologically there could be a higher risk of disease, illness, depression, disappointment, pessimism. Again, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not speaking that over you. I just, you know, want to forewarn you so that you are forearmed, um, if not for yourself, for loved ones, friends, family who are maybe dealing with these energies impacting them there's the highest use of this energy is self-care get a new perspective on life see it through a new lens um, sometimes we don't really understand what we need what we want what we value until we feel the painful absence of it and we're like oh my god that really is important i really need that like this is a deal breaker. I, I can't I can't stay at this job if I don't have this thing met or this residence, you know, if it's going to involve me living like this, if I can't, you know what I'm saying? With the pain points come a revelation of what's really important to you, what you're willing to sacrifice or work on and what you're not, you know, and for what cost. I think also, given the energy of this month, uh, many are going to enter into a time where uh, people become more aware of how charity starts in the home. But if you are not in a family that's charitable, if you're in a family where, let's say, people uh, play a lot of zero-sum games, a lot of win-lose dynamics, a lot of exploitation, um, where there's infighting for resources, every man for himself, um, Yes, very difficult, very hard, um, because the adversity is going to reveal character. It's going to reveal flawed alignments, partnerships. And again, the higher use here, painful as it is, the higher use here is to get you to disconnect, right, Aquarian, discriminately from things that are not edifying and adding value to your life and helping to move you towards those achievements and ambitions and the soulmates in your life, right? So that you can make space and allow room for connection and alignment with the things that actually do get you to those higher ideals aquarian right maybe you want to belong to that group that company that you know neighborhood whatever but if doing so if belonging to that is costing you your individuality right this is where you've got to rightly dis discern the truth you've got to rightly divide it you've got to discern you know, at what point do I part ways with this group, this, this organization, these people, this whatever, fill in the blank? Because being involved with them is going to cost me losing myself, my integrity, my values. It's going to involve me not living in the truth. It's going to derail me from my destiny. Very Aquarian stuff. And I, I hope that... This is a revelatory month for you and whatever hardships that you go through or others go through with the 20th and what I warned y'all about, I hope that you transcend it. Yeah, transcend it. Till next time, y'all be blessed.